Okay, we have another question. What is our purpose here on earth? I remember when I was a kid seeing uh, uh, a cartoon uh, version of a man climbing up to the top of a mountain and there's this holy man up on top of the mountain and asking the question, what is life all about? And then that holy man would give some kind of uh, strange answer that he has to figure out what he's talking about. Uh, and and we, we, people always wonder about that, oftentimes wonder about that. Everyone has wondered about it at some point in time. Maybe it's a better way of saying it. What is life about on this earth? And a lot of that comes down to recognizing a person to be able to understand that has to be able to recognize who put us on this earth in the first place. And of course, those of us who understand the Bible to be from God, we recognize that God did put us here. And as we uh, talked about in our, in our, last, at our last question, uh, God put us here to live forever. That was his purpose. But then man sinned. And uh, when man sinned, the universe was corrupted. Um, God says it there in, in Genesis chapter 3, that cursed is the ground because of you. And in Romans chapter 8, uh, he got the, Paul makes it clear there that creation has been subjected to futility. Okay, it's wait, Creation is waiting for its, uh, its release from this futility, which is basically going to be creation being destroyed. Okay, But right now, creation is here for us to be able to live meant to live on it for eternity, but now creation is here until judgment day when, when all men are changed into their glory, in, uh, into their new imperishable bodies and are going to go to judgment day. Then creation is destroyed. Uh, Second Peter chapter three, destroyed with fire, the earth and the universe, the, you know, the, the heavens is what he says. Like Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Second Peter chapter 3 says, In the end, God destroys the heavens and the earth. At least the end of this creation. But we go on. Now we talked about that in the last, in the last question. But now we are living right here. And so it is a good question. What is our purpose? Well, you know in the Bible... Solomon gives a one-verse answer for that. I mean, the entire book of Ecclesiastes, if you turn to Ecclesiastes, the entire book of Ecclesiastes is, deals with um, Solomon trying things out, noticing how you can do this, but it's meaningless. You can do this, but it's meaningless. And the reason it's meaningless is, is because it can only last a lifetime. Even when he, he makes a comment in, in Ecclesiastes that uh, even everything I gain through the labors of my hand, when I die, it goes to someone else. You know, it, it doesn't stay with him. And so in the very end, after Solomon has looked at everything in his mind of what this earth is all about, one, it comes down to one thing in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. The, everything comes down to one thing, and this is what life is all about. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. The conclusion, I love those words, the conclusion. After I've tried everything out, looked at everything there is to have, to experience everything there is. The conclusion, when all has been heard, is fear God and keep his commandments. Because this is the whole of man. Okay. Some translations will say this is the whole duty of man. Okay. But the word duty is not there. In fact, in those translations, either it's oftentimes in a bracket or it's in italics, but instead it says this is the whole of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. All right. So I love that phrase. What is man all about? Fearing God, keeping his commandments. What's this idea of fearing God? Well, recognizing that God is the one. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, don't fear the one who can destroy your body. He says that to his disciples when they're going to be going out into the world and taking the, the, the good news that Jesus Christ is coming. It's, we call it the limited commission. They went out before Jesus to prepare the way for him. And he told them, you're going you, you're gonna to be chased out of towns. You're going to be you're gonna be brought up before rulers. All these things are going to happen to you. But don't fear the one who can destroy your body. 
Fear instead the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. All right. So, uh, so what he's saying is, is we need to have this understanding of who really is in control and who we need to be obedient to. Now, God is only needs to be feared if we're not willing to do his will. Okay, and in 1 John chapter 4, we come to find out that perfect love casteth out fear. Well, why is that? Jesus says, if you love me, you'll do my commandments. You can, you'll do my commandments, obey my commandments. And uh, so when you love God, and this is something we have to grow into, we will be obedient to him. When I was a child, two years old, and, and my, my mom or my dad told me not to do something, and I reached out to do it anyway get smacked. I come to find out I didn't like being smacked. Sometimes that, you know, that, that, you know, that doesn't damage anything, but, but it, it's done. I didn't like that. Uh, got a little older and I got punished other ways. Sometimes whatever it was, if I had something taken away from me that I couldn't play with for a while, whatever it was, that was something I was afraid of happening. So I would be obedient. But when I got older, got to the point where I recognized that I loved my parents and I wanted to do good things for them. I didn't have, to, I wasn't punished for, by my parents. I obeyed them because I loved them. So the idea of fear, well, Solomon says in Proverbs chapter one, fear is the beginning of wisdom. It's where we start. But as we grow, we grow into recognizing that God is someone we need to be obedient to and we love him and we do obey him. When one grows in mature, spiritual maturity, Sometimes people never get that to get to that point because they're not willing to be obedient to God. So fear God, keep his commandments. Jesus says in Matthew chapter seven, verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father. Obey his commandments. So obeying his commandments is going to, is, is what we need to do. Doing his will is what we need to be living his will or else we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay, there's that fear factor, but it's also our purpose. Go with me to Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians chapter two. Very common verses. Uh, it, it, it speaks to us about how we are saved, but oftentimes people will stop with verse, we're gonna be looking at verses eight through 10. And we oftentimes will look at verses 8 and 9. And sometimes we will miss verse 10, which is actually sounds very similar to what we just saw in the Old Testament. You can almost call this the New Testament version of Ecclesiastes 12, 13 in verse 10. But we're going to start, we're going to start with verse 8, where we're used to starting. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, so that we would walk in them. Now, it doesn't say it the exact same way, but it's the same idea. God created us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, so that we would walk in them. When we sin is when we, you know, when we, we need Christ because we've sinned. Uh, sin is missing the mark. God created us to be his servants, to follow him, to do his will. We sin, we miss the mark. We need Christ to, Christ's salvation. Once we have Christ's salvation, we go back to the place that we were supposed to be in the first place. Exactly the reason, the way we were created. We, we were created to do good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Okay, That's what man is all about. Obedience to God. After all, he's the creator. We are the creation. He's the potter. We're the clay to be, to be the vessels that he designs us to be, to be useful to him.